How's it going, doggy people? I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going over another episode of Dog Impossible, Peaching an Aggressive Dog to Leash Walk. This is being used in the Fair Use Act for criticism and educational purposes. I don't make any money off this. These are not being monetized. I'm just doing this to give you a point of view from another human, an owner, a trainer, a dog's point of view versus what this trainer is telling you. Um, you know, they may be telling you one thing, but they do another and they kind of have their little, little sneaky, uh, you know, techniques that they get away with. They don't necessarily tell you what they're doing. They've always been on harnesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's walking a couple pugs right here. Now, she's just in sled dog mode. Yeah. She's pulling. I mean, that reminds me of a couple pugs that I work with. I, uh, I trained with them a little bit and also I house it. I mean, they pull, you know, the, the, their little dogs, they're surprisingly strong. Um, you know, they're excited, uh, but I've gotten them to both, you know, walk on their harnesses on a loose leash, you know, just by when they start pulling, we just kind of stop and apply a little bit of pressure, you know, to the side of them, moving them sideways. I could just sit there and wait for them. I've gone over a couple of videos of, uh, tutorials of showing you how I work with a dog on leash. So if you would like to see that in detail, you can go check that out on the channel, but we're going to see what he says. Pretty normal. Yeah. Okay. With the harness, Money Penny, for example, can lean into it, mm -hmm. and so every step. Which is she true, take... but especially for a pug, we're going to go back a couple. Which is true that she can lean into it, but especially for a pug with this short-faced brachial, uh, I don't know the the scientific term, but these short-nosed dogs, they can't really breathe very well. So they especially need everything they can off of their throat. I love this harness because it has kind of a little martingale thing in the back. It, it keeps them from slipping out. It's nice and padded. It's nice and it's nice X shape. Um, so that way it leaves her shoulders free. Yes, it, it, it gives her more room to pull, but that just means that we just have to learn to work with the dog to teach them not to pull. If you teach them in, in only a harness not to pull, they will pull in a collar. If you teach them only to pull in a collar, or only, if you teach them not to pull in a collar, they will go pull in a harness. It is a learned behavior. So I like to teach a dog every tool. For a little dog like this, you don't even need to really worry about collars. I would only ever recommend a harness. This is a great one. Um, I've actually used one on Adonis before and they're very nice quality. Um, I don't know the company you know, of course obviously this is not any promo or anything just i like this type of harness i'm very picky when it comes to uh the tool that i use on my animals for their overall comfort and so every step she takes while she's leaning into it reinforces that the way to get things is by being impulsive and by the time you get to a dog and i can agree with, with that that yes she she's being reinforced it doesn't mean you need to switch the tool out it's not necessarily the tool a harness was not made to you know it's a it's a learned behavior it's not that the harness causes or starts the pulling it's just more comfortable for the dog to pull and therefore they kind of learn for that um it's not the harness but he's talking about when they go to meet a dog absolutely we do not want our dogs pulling when they go meet a dog because they already have that energy that's too high they can it can easily cause a fight so i don't ever want a, a tight leash when a dog is meeting i don't like dogs meeting on leash anyway because it's too easy for them to um if they're trying to play, they get tangled up and then one dog might feel corrected by the leash or, or, or trapped and then they can start into a fight. It can be a misunderstanding between the dogs. Um, I just think it's dangerous. Attitudes of 50-50, how it's going to go. So, I so he's correct in, in when you have a dog that's pulling on a leash to go meet another dog. It can be a friendly greeting or it can be an aggressive greeting. Um, I think you should be able to read that with your dogs and that's why I don't necessarily just like people meeting every dog they see because you don't know if that dog is sick, if they have kennel cough, if they have an illness, if they have special, you know, needs or they're nervous or say they're going through a cancer treatment. I don't know. Okay. Just, just always ask. Don't just allow your dog to walk up to everybody and say hello because a lot of dogs like Adonis does not like dogs in his face. Um, and he will snap at them and tell them back off. I want to give you something that's going to help just set up a cleaner experience on the walk. This is called a martingale collar. It's a self okay, so this is his favorite. Correcting collar. Self-correcting. So a lot of people like this will go from harness to collar because you get more control with the collar. He's not going to tell them that because this is more, in this case, aversive, I would say. And the martingale, I'm all for martingales for a lot of dogs. Um, just a regular collar. I like to teach a lot of dogs to walk in a regular collar with an appropriate width. I like them to be wide so it's more surface area. For a dog like this, I do not recommend collars for small dogs, um, especially ones that pull. I only ever recommend harnesses. Can you teach them to not pull in a regular flat buckle uh, collar? Absolutely, but especially for a pug, 
I want them to have as much of that airway free as possible. And certain harnesses will even kind of go across their chest and, and cut off that that ability to breathe. So I don't even recommend certain harnesses. But he's going to go for the cheater, which is the martingale. You know, he, I'm sure he would go for a slip lead too. Maybe, I don't know, but he might go for a slip lead. But because these dogs are so hard at breathing anyway, he wouldn't go for the slip lead because it would literally choke the dog. But you get more control of the dog by controlling their head. He's not going to tell him that, though. The different about this is when they pull, it will tighten, and when they relax, it will loosen. So the main purpose about the martingale, though, is not to be a corrective, a, a corrective collar. It was modeled after the greyhound um, because the greyhounds have very thick necks and then very, you know, they call them bicycle head, you know, bicycle seat heads, you know, little banana heads. Um, and so regular fixed collar would slip right off. So the martingale was made to tighten when they, you know, when they're walking or they try to back out of it it's made to be like a no slip collar uh, but not necessarily a corrective collar um, unless you look for the type with the chain because then people think you know oh, the chain is like a dog growl and it's just a bunch of nonsense but i do like martingales because it is loose consistently and if the dog tries to slip out for certain dogs that are escape artists that is a learned behavior like adonis i do have a martingale I want you to work a lot less and let them start to figure it out. So he's trying, again, he's putting, he wants the, the human to work less, because heaven forbid the human who taught this dog to pull, whether they meant to or not, you need to take accountability as a human. You got this dog this far, but yet now the dog is the one who has to suffer. And not really necessarily suffer, but the dog is the one who has to have the difficulty of learning to rewalk because they're in a self-correcting collar. So again, he's putting the accountability on the dog and not the human. I tell people when I work with them, I'm not a, a fast trainer. I'm a slow trainer. When you work with your dog, we're not going to be yanking or popping. We're going to use the harness. We're going to take our time. If it takes us 20 minutes to get 10 feet, then it'll take us 20 minutes to get 10 feet. But in that period, the dog will be able to learn how to walk more appropriately. They'll be able to sniff things. Well, you know, it's more beneficial to the dog. And I get he's on a show. He has to have quick results, but... It's still, the dog still has to pay for this. I don't like this idea, especially for these little short-faced little dogs. Other dogs, it might not be a bad idea. I wouldn't mind him using this martingale, um, depending on how he uses it. But teaching a dog to walk in a martingale, nothing wrong with that, except for these little dogs. This harness, I think, is the best shot for this little pug. Bigger? The safest, We're going to start with walking 101. The walk is all about the relationship. Okay, if so I he's already kind of tugging at the dog. The slack up on the leash. I start to give the dog a visceral understanding that we're doing this together. Mm -hmm. This is not so that I can be in control. No, it's so he can manhandle the dog. He's saying that he's not, but he is. It doesn't matter what his intentions are. The dogs don't care the intentions. They care what you do. So he takes off the harnesses. He puts in this no-slip self-correcting collar, as he says, the self-correcting collar. He takes up all the slack. So that way it's you have more control of the dog because they're closer by. And also you have less mistake for them to get into you have they're likely to get into less trouble because they're not as far away from you and that you have you know you don't have that slack to take in that could you know for a small dog it could really injure them a hand is firm but my arm can stay relaxed i'm going to walk with money so he has it in a leash lock and every time she pulls i will stop as soon as she gives me slack on the leash i'll say good girl and then we'll start moving okay the good girl really won't matter unless you pair it with a treat i've condition many dogs accidentally by saying you know good boy good girl because every time i do happen to say that i reach down i give them a little treat reward and then we keep going on our way then after a few times a few repetitions then i'll just say oh good girl because i like to talk to the dogs i work with you know good girl good job and they end up looking at me as if i had clicked or i said yes because i conditioned that word to that means you get a reward so fun little uh She's going to begin to learn Trick. that when I pull, I don't get what I want. When I relax, I get what I want. Okay, you two stay there. Okay, so that's, you know, a pretty basic old school way of, of training. And not necessarily old school of, of you know, as far as the positive reinforcement um, training goes. Is that, yeah, you know, we're just going to sit here and we're just going to take our time and whatnot. And that would be fine. But why couldn't she be on a harness? when you If you're going to do that, why couldn't you have her on the harness? That makes no sense that you're going to teach her this way and he's already pulling her this way away from the people she can't fight it as much because she's on the martingale she wants to be with her people i would have the people walk i don't walk a dog that doesn't want to be with me 
Oh, you're such a good girl. She's nervous. She's Look looking around. She's not trusting are, of huh? him. You like walking with somebody, don't you? See how loose that is? Yeah. Now, we don't know how long he's been working this. Of course, it's easy because you have her on her collar. You know, the harness, she'd be going all over the place. You can do the same exact thing with the harness. But he's acting like this collar is the fix-all. When they take her or they meet another dog, she's going to be pulling and choking herself and, and possibly causing a collapsed trachea and who knows whatever else. Yeah. It is crazy. Money Penny is so good on the leash for Matt. She's only good because she doesn't know him. She hasn't associated pulling with him. She's fearful of him. Like, I'm not saying he's done anything to her. She's just a nervous right little away. dog. She could walk and now she's on something that's controlling her neck and her head, so she can't fight it as much as when she's on a harness. Like that with us, our life would be totally different. There we go. There's a real pull. I stopped. Okay, so tight. Oh, God. No, dude. He's pulling up on her tiny little neck. She's already short. She's trying to get to mom and dad. Whale eyes. He's closing up her throat now. I don't counter Pressure, pull. pressure, pressure, pressure. I don't pressure. Add tension. She adjusts. She that, no, that... We're going to go back a couple. Stop. I don't counter pull. I don't No, add she's fighting it. Tension. She adjusts. So here, tension. I would rather... I like to give my dog their full six, six foot leash or four foot leash, however long this is. He needs to loosen this. This is still tension. You know, this is still... Look at that little dog's head. It should be down here somewhere. He's pulling her head up and she only has like a centimeter or a couple centimeters or maybe an inch of space to move her head up and down. He needs to give her this leash. We need to let this leash out through our hand, let it slide through our hand and develop feel and timing. We don't just let go of it so the dog ends up hitting the end of it and slamming herself into the leash. And then we just gently, I use just a finger's worth. I don't need to put a, a leash lock on it. I don't need to use two hands on even a pug or a bigger dog. I just use a finger and I just apply them to the left or to the right. Um, again, you can see in detail of how I teach Adonis. I've shown many different examples of that. She, she has too much tension on that. Good she's not girl. comfortable. Gorgeous. Oh my god. And she's still okay. cool That's to go to her little friends. And she's just choking. He's just teaching her to ignore that tension. It's amazing. Okay, Katie, I want you to walk her. Left side, right side, doesn't matter to me. Keep your arm Agreed. long. Okay. So unless you're teaching, I mean, even if you teach heel, I think you could teach it on the left and the right. I think it's it's good to teach your dog on both sides, so that way they can be interchangeably. Some people, the people who only care about it on one side, are into competition or old school, where it can only be on the left hand side. That's just nonsense. And just keep your hand where it is. There Very good. Go. Now, see, now, the dog is doing fine because she has a loose hand. Walk easy. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, so the dog is not necessarily in pain, but it's tightening up around her neck, and she's fighting the tension. When the dogs pull, we stop. Okay, Only she stops. When they relax, Perfect. We... Now she could reward. Praise them and then we go. Now Praise just is not enough. Katie. Yep, now relax. you can use the walk as the reward, but in the beginning, I would probably give them a little extra treat. It's that Let left arm. Sniff. There you go. As soon Ouch. as you feel any slack on that, praise her and go. Okay, come on. Good girl. We want to catch Shaking it in the off. first three seconds for the dog to understand what it is that we're trying to do here. Okay, good girl. Come on. Very good. How's that feel? So good. Okay, so that was a pretty quick little uh, video there, but just kind of showing you know things that I know it's only two and a half minutes long, but I probably spent 15 minutes on this. But I'm just pointing out things that I see, and, and they're going to say that, you know, oh, it's because the magical collar. No, it's because you have more control over the dog's head. You control the head, you control the body. It's easier to control this than having a harness that is comfortable. This works because of discomfort, because you're cutting off their airway. However little that may be, it's a small dog, we're very tall, they have a short face anyway, that can't, they can't breathe as well. You could do the exact same thing in the harness. I don't know why he can't do that in the harness, why he needs this, but that's what he's not telling you. You can do and you should do the same exact thing in the harness. And I, I could have said that in the first 10 seconds of this video, it would have been so much shorter. But um, anyway, that's just my point of view. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Let me know if you did learn anything from it. Um, let me know what you would like to see next time. Um, and if you have any questions. And until then, stay positive.